Good morning, everyone. This is Billy. I'm going to be making a tray today with this large mold. And if you want to see how I do it using all of these goodies, please stay tuned for the video. I'll be right with you. Enjoy. <laughs> Hello everyone. Thank you for joining me today. This is Billy. I hope you liked my little intro. I thought maybe I'd try something a little different, but good morning to you. It's six o'clock in the morning where I am today. Cold outside and I'm just going to hunker down in my craft room and get busy. So I've used this tray before and uh, it, it's a nice size tray and we're going to do a little Christmas decorating on it today. So let me show you what I've dug out when I went hunting and gathering. Okay. We're not going to use everything, but this is a close idea as to what I have in mind. So I have that mold. And then, Miss Wanda from Wanda's Blessed Creations uh, sent me a goodie package, and here are uh, handles for the mold. And rather than using handles I already have, I'm going to make my own. And uh, we're going to decorate this with a little bit of greenery some oh gold pearls let's see and a few little uh, of these plastic beads just need a few of those and we'll make the handles with those items I'm gonna flip this mold over so over here so it doesn't get all dirty all right so got this that Whoa, I almost spilled the bag. Oh, what did I grab? I grabbed some gold and red bows. I grabbed a little bit of uh, see, uh, greenery here, which is gold and a little bit of red. I'm trying to use up what, I've, what I have here. Now I have these little um, reindeer, and I know I got these several years ago from Hobby Lobby. Uh, they're little wood pieces with glitter on them. And some more sprigs of gold. Also at Hobby Lobby, I got this little, these little foam Noels with red glitter. Might use one or two of those. Oh goodness, I have some gold and green leaf sequins. Do something with those. A couple of bows. Oh, let's see, snowflakes. These were from Hobby Lobby too some time ago, and I have a, an abundance of those. Oh, and I grabbed a little glitter, a little red in here, a little red here, a little red and white here. Okay, um, now these are snowflakes I made out of um, condiments or candy molds from Michaels. I made these a few years ago, maybe, or just last year. There's a few snowflakes. And then also with molds from Michaels, I did these little poinsettias. And we're going to need a couple of those snowflake stickers. So that. Oh, and I have some leftover rhinestones from um, a diamond painting I did. There's gold, green, and red. Grabbed a few of those. I have some just for you online UK. This is a white. We'll be putting that in our resin. And I also have from Estoyo uh, this pearlescent pigment powder and it is a red. I can't read what that says. Water. Oh, watermelon red. Okay. Now these clash and I want watermelon red because when I show you the foundation you'll understand why so we have to prepare those with some micas this is some more mica that sort of match the color I want and the color I want is poinsettias the color of these poinsettias now these are window planes okay and um, I found these at a yard sale for 50 cents. 
So, um, I have to watch myself at yard sales. Oh my goodness. So these have been used. They've been on and off windows. So what I have been doing to get a little bit prepared and ahead of the game was I was cutting all of the plastic around the clings themselves off because uh, being used, as you can see on these letters here, the season's greetings, uh, they're kind of dirty and we don't want that in our mold. We want something to look, you know, new. So I've got all these cut and they're going to be the foundation of our mold. Poinsettias and snowflakes. That's the theme. Now, this piece right here is too big for the mold. I mean, I could trim this down a little bit and set it sideways, but I really don't, I don't want the basket. Okay, so um, I just took some small scissors and I started to cut off this basket. And it's just pretty simple. We're just going to go around and get rid of that basket. Don't want it. I'm not real fond of this uh, blue bow either, so I will probably cut that out and uh, replace it with one of those red or green ones that I had pulled aside. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this out. And get rid of this. Now last year for Valentine's, I uh, used window clings and some coasters, and they turned out adorable. So I thought this would be a good way to use these. And this video is going to be entered in Claire's Crafty Corner, her Christmas collaboration. And this will be posted within a couple of weeks if she accepts it. And if she does, I will have the link to all of the artists that are included in the collab in my descriptions below. So I am just getting ready for Claire. And have this done. She has... She has... she Well, she, she gathers up or people... Up, check in with her to see if they can join her collab and if they do oh my goodness you should see some of the beautiful creations that these artists make so uh claire i hope you accept this one and thank you for so much thank you for being a great instructor and thank you for this opportunity for those of us who are just starting out, or even those that are um, well-renowned on YouTube, great artists, and it's just a great opportunity for us just starting out. Let me just get that one little piece off of there. Okay. Now, I'm not going to throw this away. This could be used for something else. My finger's stuck. And I'm not using these letters there. I just don't like them. They're not very pretty. I'll just get rid of that for now. Get rid of this piece. And I'll get rid of the blue so you can see what I'm doing here. All right. Now, I'll think about the bow. And if I cut it off, I'll cut it off out off camera. But I really have a nice selection now of poinsettias. So we need to do a little preparation. Let's start with these little poinsettias. Now I only want a couple of them and I some are a little thicker than the others. I want the thinner ones because that mold is not all that deep. So I just want a couple. Now those two are the thinnest I think. We can use these for another project or they'd be cute earrings wouldn't they? All right, so once again, I'm taking a little cup. I'm taking my polyurethane, and we're going to mix a new color with the polyurethane 
don't need much, and some mica powders. Okay. You've seen me do this a lot, I think, in some of my videos. All right, I need a little stir stick right here. And now this is a pretty metallic, and this comes real close to the red in these poinsettias. So does this. But I think I'm more inclined to use this one. Now this one I... I got from Timu, and I have Timu uh, information in my description, but I don't have the links to everything. Um, if you need the links to something particular from Timu, let me know, and I will look that up for you. It's just, uh, it's not really easy to reference their links. At least I don't find it all that easy. So let's just get a little... This is going to be shimmery, too. My polyurethane will dry clear. But I just want to match these reds up the best I can. And this is pretty much the only way I know how to do it. Or you could use acrylic paint, but you wouldn't have the shimmer. Shimmer or the shine. So, like I said, I won't need much. I'm just going to grab my napkin here, set that down, get my paintbrush. I probably don't need one this big, but I'm just going to go for it. And uh, we'll just color that in. It'll make, it'll make a difference. Actually, if you can tell right now, I, I need to back up a little bit, don't I? That uh, it will make a difference. So let me... Let me adjust the camera because I tend to, let's see, there we go. I've been tending to lose you lately with my camera. Okay, that's better. And we're just going to doctor these up a little bit. Okay, that should do it. Now the white ones are okay. We won't have to do anything to those. All right, and I'm going to put my brush in my little container of water with some dish soap. And then I can clean those shortly, but I think we're good to go. Set it over here so I don't spill it. Set those down to dry. Okay, let me wake my hands a little bit. I've been keeping my ice, uh, isopropyl alcohol in here. It comes in handy. This is why my hands look chapped and dry, but that's okay. Get lotion on them later. Crafting hands, I think, is what I have. All right. Just set that somewhere else. And we'll put this away. Now, for the flowers themselves, I'm going to grab a little bit of this um, B7000. This is jewelry glue. And I'm going to just take a few, my little sequins, not, oh, I did it again, my little rhinestones. And I'm going to just glue these make sure I have the right side up just gonna glue a few of these onto the poinsettias I'll just place them over top now these are a bright yellow rhinestone and I'm hoping they won't fade out because if you put clear ones on, you lose them completely. And my coffee, here's my tweezers, okay. They'll wash out completely under resin if they're clear. I'm just gonna give these a little pizzazz, that's all. 
Well, this worked out a lot easier. Let me just finish the last of this one here. And we'll go on to the next step. And I'm looking at these uh, poinsettias that I just colored in. They're rather dark, but uh, I think we'll just go with them because I checked out my paint and I don't have a red that comes close to that. So what I'm talking about is going ahead and using the ones I just did, but these, I don't know, they're too pink. So anyway, that was a thought going through my head as I was doing this. Just get these down. I did cut out the bow. Now I'm torn between the red bow or the green bow. Um, we'll see. Let me grab that in just a second. We'll put these aside to dry. Come on, get there. And then we'll almost be ready to get some resin poured. There. Those are all finished now. Let me put these aside to dry and I'll be right back with you. Okay, I cut the bow out and looking at that gap, I've got the red one here and I'll have white show up underneath that. So an alternative would be to take one of these and fill in this area here and possibly another one, I have a single one here, fill these in and then put a bow somewhere. Well, I like the red one better. Somewhere like that. So I'm liking this better, but I want to go with the red bow. And I'm going to set these aside. I missed a part of the basket, but I'm going to go ahead and cut this one off. And I was thinking, with all these separate flowers, we could actually make a nice couple of coasters, too. Let's see where that takes us. Get rid of this. Or I could cut them all apart and just have them sporadically... Um, all over the tray and I think that's oh I'm not cutting the leaf off I think that sounds more appealing actually okay I think that's really all I need except to um, cut the strings off a few of these because they're gonna go in our base resin and I'll do two layers. We'll do the white layer, layer on the bottom. We're working right side up. And uh, get these set. And then we can place the poinsettias down and the handles. And we should be on our way to getting this finished. I didn't mean to pause when I'm talking. I was thinking. So, I'll get back with you. We're going to go mix up some resin. I have to look into my notes and see how much this tray actually uses because I've forgotten. It's been a while. But I'll find that out. And I'll see you in the back porch where I pour my resin. Okay? All right, everyone. Now, I had a note that said this tray holds 30 ounces of resin. Um, that's going to be give or take because I weighed it when it was finished, the last one I did, and that included the handles, and I didn't write the weight of the handles, but give or take 30 ounces, I made up 16. So, almost, you know, cut it in half and then some. So if I have extra, we'll be fine, but I do need to pour the, the handles. So that might compensate. Now, I, um, I mix this for five minutes with my uh, Let's, Reven Let's Resin um, 
little hand blender. So there are quite a few bubbles, but with this resin I have found they disappear quickly and especially if you put a mica in them, then they just seem to vanish. Now I could have put this in my debubbler, but it's too full. This container is a deli cup, but it's too full and it would, you know, bubble over. So I didn't want to take that chance because that would give you oh, one heck of a mess. So let's just grab, the, just for you on Line UK, the white, let me double check, it's the white pigment. It's got a bit of glitter in it, or not glitter, but sheen, sparkle. And that's going to be our snow. And I might wait a bit until this is tacky before I put the snowflakes in because I just don't want to set them down and have, you know, the white pigment pigment overtake them. So let's just, I'm going to put in two healthy scoops. I do want the bottom of this to be opaque. So let's start with two and I'm going to take my mixer again and we'll just blend that right in. See, see how we do. That's a lot of resin for the adding pigment, so this should this should get her done quickly. I'll need more. I could put some pinata blanco blanco in there, but oh look at that. There's our shimmer. That is so pretty. It's still not opaque though, so let's add a little more into that and we'll keep it keep it going I could have just done a plain snowy white background but I like the shimmer of these micas so let's just do I'm going to do two more now the amount of micas you put in are not going to affect your cheer it's when you do liquid um, alcohol inks and or um, pigment paste that you need to worry about you know no more than 10 percent so let's keep going I'll tell you this mis mixer has been a godsend to me it sure saves on the the hands and the wrists that all mixed in there. Oh, that's so pretty. Very pretty. I want to mix it real well. Normally, I think a lot of artists, they use uh, just a little bit of resin and then mix their pigment in and then go ahead and add that to the you know the whole batch the bigger quantity but uh, I think we'll be all right I'm just going to give it a good mix now this is my let's resin resin the one to one ratio and I weigh my resins I started doing that uh, quite some time ago and I think it works out just fine and it also works out to where you don't have more of B left over uh, when you've emptied your container of A, so I think weighing it um, works just fine with this resin. Let's see who, how opaque that looks on a stick, because I think it's still not. Well, it's still not. You can tell right there. Let's just see. No, it's still pretty see-through. But a lot of times when you, you know, condense it into the mold, you're still, um, you know, it, it, it will condense itself and the color seems to be more opaque. But I'm going to go ahead and add two more scoops. So that'll be six scoops all together, eh? These are nice heaping scoops. Now, just for you on Line UK, uh, was one of the first micas I had ever purchased. And I can't remember how many colors came in the kit. But, uh, 
a nice variety except of course there was no red and uh, from what I understand red is hard to find I did order some from oh my goodness oh heavens um, something something candy and I ordered a blood red or they sent the wrong red so I never did you know take them up on sending me another one you know it wasn't going to be a refund in any way so I just thought well I'll just keep the red I have and maybe down the line I'll be able to order more but, uh, still see bubbles and I still see where it's not blended Sure is pretty, isn't it? I think we'll let those bubbles surface and we'll go ahead and pour. Now, another thing I do, and I didn't get it ready, but uh, stay right there for me, please. I do uh, take a little cup and I squirt. I've got a pump bottle of. Uh, isopropyl alcohol and I just get some in this little container stick my mixer in it and give it a stir until I can clean it up real well that helps get most of the resin off and then I'll let it set and dry just a little tip that's worked out for me pretty good so I'm going to set that aside and not spill it because last time I spilt it all right well, I've got micas on my mold um, the glitter you see on the mold is on the other side of the mold because when I brought everything in here I um I just oops we'll just smear it in I um, had this the sparkly snow for flakes sitting on the back of this so I just want to do a thin layer remember we're going to add more to it when we do the clear so let's just give this a pour I have it on my uh, leveling board with my heating mat and I think we can get to this sooner than originally where we'd have to wait you know overnight so I just want a thin layer and I hope I'm going to have a lot of extra. Let's just see what happens. Let's push that around. If I have more moles standing by, well, let's get a little in here. Notice the heating mat uh, is kind of warped, so I've taped it down to my leveling board. Let's just get some of this in here. That's pretty thin. I'm sure we can add more to this. Let's get it all the way up to the edges. And I checked to see if it was level. But with the heating mat kind of Wampus, it's not going to guarantee, I don't think, a real flat, even surface. I think that's going to be plenty. I'll check this in about an hour and then put the snowflakes down. Get the heat gun to that. It's pretty thin. I'm going to see if it's, see it's lower on this, this end here. Oh, it just, it's kind of irritating. Let me just get a stick and prop it under this one, one foot here and see if that makes a difference. I'll have to do the other foot too. Gosh, I just checked this. 
And you know, I'm on a countertop here, so when the house settled, you know that's not level. Under the foot. Let's give that a shot. That looks better. Let me get my heat gun and I'm going to mute this out. I don't need to hear that. I guess I ought to plug it in. Oh, it is plugged in. All right. No, it isn't. I'm making noise. I'm making noise now. Now I do see a hair. And I'm not going to put my, um, I'm not going to spray alcohol because this is a top, even though the majority of it will probably, probably be covered up, but I don't want to take chances. I don't know, is that the same one and I missed it? Maybe. Where are you? Did you? Oh, there it is, right there. Let's double check. Huh. See, it's on my brush. So I'm just going to go around the edges real quick and make sure we don't have bubbles around the sides. These micro brushes are sure nice. My friend Annette turned me on to them. Hello, Annette. Please give me a give me a call, man. I haven't heard from you for some time. I hope everything's well. And I'm gonna look from the side. And I don't see anything in there. So um, let's get these handles now. Where I am, and I'll just pull this tray down, okay, like that. I was getting ahead of myself and starting to panic. So I'm going to this corner. I still can't see, can you? This corner. Oh, I dropped it. Oh. So what I'm wanting is to have those two in the corner and then I'm going to glue the red ones on top. like So it'll be like a little group of three. Okay, so we won't do that yet. But those come right over the edge of the mold a little bit. But, you know, you're still going to have a small, a nice sized area for um, your drinks or whatever it is, your candies or something you want to put on there. We'll have room for that. Okay, now, I've got to see if I bring my, that's going to be close, so it could be not centered, but I wasn't thinking too late now. It comes over there. Darn it, I was not thinking. Let me see if I can't. We should be able to cover this up if I have to. I'm going to pull that farther in. Give myself more handle space. I think we'll be alright. Handles might be a little jiggered, you know, this way. I'm not going to sweat it. Alright. Can't tell which is the right side up on these, but we're just going to leave space for the handle and possibly come in like this. Or maybe we can go like this, kind of cuddle. Ooh, that's drying quickly. Get my snowflakes in. Let's see. Give myself some room here. Probably about that much room. Just like so. Go to this side. This side we can have to finagle that. Like, how do we do that when we're going to try to go the opposite way and make room? 
Now all eight are not going to fit in here because of what I just did. Room for the handles. Probably get that. Tack that down. Oh, it's pretty dry. Oh well. Probably won't move. We're just guessing. We're just guessing here. Try to put one maybe close to centered. I'm going to have to get my other resin mixed and set these in. So I'm going to have to do okay something like this. Alright, we're going to call that good. Well, let me just go ahead and mix up. I'm going to do a very, very thin coat. And then I can, once that's set, the poinsettias will sit down nicely. And uh, we can finish this up. I'll move that over. I'm trying to get spaced. Okay. Well, only six. That'll work because we're going to have our poinsettias filling in the uh, gaps. Okay, well, now I had a heck of a time, like I said, trying to get that level. And I, because I needed, I'm going to leave it on this board here, I needed a little bit of space for one more, one more um, layer. And I was propping this up and keeping an eye on it, but that's how it turned out with the pretty, pretty snowflakes on there. All right, now I've got a little bit of a flex or something in here in the snowflake. And I wanted to remove the silver rhinestone in. I did not get a chance to do that, so I don't know what that is. It'll come on. You can blow it. Excuse me. Okay. There we go. Back into place. Now, I can fix that real quick with a little bit of my B7000. And I'm going to put gold on top. They're flat, so I think the gold will just fit fine on there. Just need a few, four of them. Might have gone bigger. I don't know that I had bigger. That's okay. We're just going to put a dab of glue. Each one of these little areas. Silver might show. Not too worried about it. Let's get that in there. I like this glue because it has such a fine tip. My tweezers and I keep shifting this board around. Now, can you see? Let me go right up to this corner. If I can grab one. Can get my little waxy doodle out on there. Center it over that silver one. We'll, we'll be okay. Oh, oh. <laughs> now I'm sticking to it. Better, like that better. Go to this one. I don't know if I have my little, there's my little wax tool thingy. Try again. Turn it over. There we go. All right, I turned it over. It's over here. There, I wanted to get that. I wanted to get that taken care of. And let's grab the little red ones. 
because I wanted to place those. Can you see each corner? I might have to lift you up a little bit. Oh, you can see. Okay. I want to put these back here. Like sitting in the corner like that. I think that'll be really pretty. And of course that's going to stick up. But uh, once we get, let's see, like I said, I'm going to have to put the handles. They're going to be cattywampus opposite of each other, but I did save enough room. So that's going to be, that's going to be fine. Still going to be quite pretty and you can still use it that way. So back to the glue. for everything too. Get those flecks off. And see, I really don't have much room. We can't see there under here. Just enough to get another layer on and hopefully cover up the rhinestones on the flowers. So here we go. Let me get them over here. I did cut out a bunch. Now these are our window clings that I really had no need for. Chance. I'm going to stick some of these sticker. Which I think they're stickers snowflakes down and add to it and possibly catch you know catch little pieces of the of the flower like that there I'm doing it I'll just have to watch for bubbles so I'm just gonna do it this is what I'm up to. I'll be back with you when I have the resin mixed up and these down as best as I can place them because they are sticking. And I'll add a few more snowflakes. So until then, I'll be back soon. Bye. Hello everyone. Well, I'm back and I finished up putting the little snowflake stickers on and I think this is absolutely stunning. We can still see the snowflakes underneath with the glitter. Um, it turned out lovely. So then I then I got to thinking because um, these handles I made are rather ugly. You know, they're just too much. They're uh, they're going in the recycling bin or whatever. I can't I can't use those. And I thought I'd have to make another set and then prolong, you know, the wait. But then, oh, I thought, Billy, look in your stash. And lo and behold, I found these. Talk about luck. I, I wasn't expecting to, you know, I didn't expect I had these. So they're still going to be off a little bit. I'm not going to go this way. I think that takes up too much space your tray itself although it looks pretty but I think we're just gonna I'm gonna go ahead come up to the side do the best I can they won't be off too much so I had to take off my gloves because I didn't want to handle these with resiny gloves on and I'll put them in when this layer gets tacky so let me grab another glove here I think I can use them three times maybe maybe before they tear on me my gloves so and I do wear my PEE when I um, pour and mix my resin's been sitting there about oh three minutes um, I only had 
three ounces left of part B in my one jug of Let's Resin Resin. So I went ahead and emptied that out and put another three ounces of the A in. So six ounces is what I have here. I'm going to hit it with the glue gun real quick. I still have a few bubbles and I didn't put it on my debubbler. Maybe I should have, but I didn't. Let me just do that real fast. Now I have my air purifier on in here and my portable heater. So it looks pretty thick yet, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, get a paper towel over to the side. I'm going to go ahead and pour because, uh, oh yes, this is too rich looking for those other handles. I should double check my press down here. And I did grab a little bit of, you know, a part of the flower on some of these when I put them down. So it's on my leveling board. I took off that heating mat and I'm just going to let's go see what we've got. Make sure I get over the rhinestones and I don't have much of a lip left so I don't want to overdo it I do have enough I want to pour in the corners here where this uh, where these flowers are I didn't get a, the exact color I wanted but it still looks pretty nice and I think it accents the piece lovely so let's just uh, Bring some of this over. Oh, there's not much of a lift there. I was really unlevel. Let's just get it spread. Look at how pretty. I won't speak too soon, but I don't know that we'll have bubbles come up under the window clings, which would be great. Absolutely great. So, this is where I'm at, everyone. I'm going to get it up to the edges. I'm going to let this cure. I'll cover it. And uh, I can demold. I'll get the handles in after this pour when it gets a little sticky or tacky. And uh, I'll just go ahead and wait till we can demold and uh, see what the edges look like make sure we don't have to um, you know color them or sand them down or anything but uh, we might and if so that's all right I do have some white markers or white testers my testers paint is good for edging a piece of glitter there that could probably move out of the way So until then, I'll keep an eye on it, and uh, I'll see you in the morning. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you for watching so far, and uh, we'll see what happens. Good night. Hello, everyone. This beautiful tray is ready to demold. I thought it turned out beautifully. However, pardon my, pardon my light. Get that one out of the way. That's my ceiling light. I'm sorry. The only problem I came up with is right there, if you can see, they call them fish eyes or I call them dimples. There's dimples in my resin right here, which is really a bummer, but I will fix it. I'll just do a full top coat again, but I want to get it out of the, the mold because I have no more room to do a top coat. So I guess you would call it a flood coat when I'm through. But let's see what these edges look like. Now the handles set in nicely. They're straight, meaning vertically they're straight. <laughs> they didn't fall over when I wasn't looking. That's happened before. Um, 
But anyway, I thought it just turned out really, really pretty. So you can use window clings in your resin with a few little accents. There you have it. Now the edges, they're, they're pretty, they're not too sharp. I might take a little sanding to the edge just a little bit. I feel a, a few rough spots here. Um, other than that, I'm not going to edge it or anything with any color. I think it's just beautiful. I put it on this little green mat so you can kind of see most of it. And there it is. So I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank Claire for her collaboration this Christmas 2023. And I would love to have you look at all the artisans that are involved in the collaboration. I will, if she accepts this video, I will have it linked in my description box. And you can watch them all. And it's just a really nice thing that Claire does for the holidays. Thank you, Claire. Thank you, everyone. Please take good care. I'm sending big hugs. Bye.